Hi, welcome back to another edition of Lippers Fund Flows Insight. My name is Tom Rosine. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be reporting flows uh, for the conventional fund business. That's going to be ex-ETFs initially, and then after that we'll get into the ETFs. For the week ended Wednesday, October 9th, 2013. I don't think anybody will be amazed when I tell you that we saw about $19.1 billion in outflows. Investors hate uncertainty, and certainly with the debt ceiling problem uh, you know, on everybody's mind, Congress at the impasse about uh, the shutdown of the government uh, certainly had investors you know, biting their nails and doing a lot of hand wringing and the like, despite seeing fairly good earnings reports from Alcoa the other day. Uh, we actually saw that they actually had a, a better than expected uh, uh, earnings report. And we saw that in the China, uh, Chinese uh, government actually reported that they had a better China service sector uh, report as well. So really there was some good news, but really the overriding issues was the government, the impasse and the stalemate that's uh, on, on the hill right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the macro groups and how, what, you know, what these actually did to the flows. Equity funds saw about $140 million of money flow out of their coffers this is really quite detailed. Uh, look at it, you'll see what it really happened. It doesn't show it there. Taxable bond funds, so about a hundred, I'm mean, sorry, about a billion dollars net new money coming into their coffers. Muni bond funds continued on their drastic ways. Seen about $700 million of outflows in money market funds, shed about $19.2 billion. That was certainly where the lion's share occurred. If we take a look at equity funds, however, we get a breakdown of really what happened. And again, you know, I told you there was some good earnings news out there, but really, overall, people were just too concerned to get back in the market. We saw about a 2.22% decline in the market overall from Wednesday to Wednesday. It's the second week in three that we've seen outflows. Again, about $142 million in outflows, and this is the second consecutive week of outflows after having 38 consecutive weeks of inflows. So certainly, people are not taking this government impasse very well. Still, year to date, we've seen about $145 billion in net new money enter their coffers. How this broke out was really a tale of two cities. Domestic equity funds took the one-two punch, $1.6 billion in outflows while, this is the third consecutive week, by the way, that they've seen outflows, while non-domestic equity funds actually saw for the 19th consecutive week inflows, uh, $1.4 billion in net new money enters their coffers. And it was really kind of funny because it's the way investors approach this. On the retail side, you know, when we're taking a look at the uh, the money or the uh, the uh, retail uh, funds, we saw them shun about $1.1 billion out of the large cap funds. And that's what the, the high flyers have been for a while. On the international side, though, we saw people going back in. $1.3 billion net new money coming into the non-domestic side, and that was primary in international funds. So people really decided they wanted to go after like European region funds, international funds, not necessarily the single country funds. However, we did see emerging market uh, uh, funds taking about $500 million net new money. So certainly people were interested in the China news that came out, but certainly the international play, especially with the impasse in government. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, ETF arena as well. This is the second consecutive week we've seen outflows. This time we saw about $6 billion come out, uh, you know, out of their coffers. Spider SP mid-cap 400 actually took in uh, about $700 billion. And really what we saw there was another mid-cap uh, fund taking in money and then European region funds, right? That's what I was telling you about, that the investors really are just kind of getting disgusted with the U.S. government. And they're saying, listen, maybe we'll get better returns uh, overseas. On the flip side, if we take a look at the bottom of the barrel, it was really the old flyers. We saw the SPY hit, you know, all new time highs about two weeks ago. And since we've been having this meltdown, people just don't trust it anymore. So they've taken the largest share out of there, $3.5 billion of money coming out of those coffers. And then we saw the iShares uh, Russell 2000, the small cap, get beat up. But remember, we've had a very good rally in small small caps and I think investors were really punishing the growth side of the industry. Small caps and growth really took it on the chin as well. Well, let's take a look now on how we got to the fixed income portion because this is the fifth consecutive week we've seen inflows into the fixed income arena. If we break that down, we saw again, fifth consecutive week of inflows, about a billion dollars net new money enter their coffers. Second week and three though, that we've seen negative performance. So investors are a little bit confused on where to put their money. But what we saw was the big money actually went into corporate investment grade debt funds. They saw about $1.9 billion net new money coming in their coffers. However, investors are still pretty sure, even though the Fed decided to forego any sort of uh, 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 taking away some of that easy money off the, off the table, they actually put another half a billion dollars into loan participation funds. This is the 69th consecutive week we've seen that as well. Government mortgage funds, though, lost about $467 uh, million. And of course, this is where they got punished, was really on the government mortgage side. Also, uh, on the debt side, we saw the international and global income funds take it on the chin as well. 
losing about $399 million during the week. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what happened on the ETF side for fixed income funds. Certainly, this is quite different. We saw uncertainty affect the market completely on this side of the uh, on this side of the uh, of the equation. We saw about 1.4 uh, billion dollars of net new money hit the I shares 7 to 10, but then on the flip side as we're taking a look at another treasury, we saw 130 million dollars uh, you know come out, but we saw on the I shares 3 to 7 treasury bond lose about 714 million dollars. So this is just kind of a confusing time. So again, 1.4 billion dollars in outflows overall for ETFs. My apologies. Uh, but if we take a look, again, the I shares 7 to 10 your treasury ETF, so about $130 million on inflows, but p p investors just on the flip side for the three to seven year treasury saw about $714 million on the outflows. So it really it was just a chaotic time for uh, ETF uh, fixed income funds. And, and I, I don't think we're going to get any stability until we have a, re a resolve from the government uh, on what they're going to be doing with uh, the debt ceiling and certainly on the closure of the partial closure of, uh, of the government and getting some of the government employees back, uh, back to working again. Uh, let's take a look at what happened to muni bond funds. They suffered again their 20th consecutive week of outflows. $713 million came off the table there. And it's the first week in five that we've actually seen negative performance, 0.18%. Uh, Interesting enough, though, we are seeing an actual decrease in the four-week moving average as far as outflows go, and I think that bodes well for munis going forward. I think people have, you know, finally realized baby with the bathwater technique is, just doesn't work, and they're finding some attractive yields uh, as the uh, munis got bid down uh, completely. So we're going to see some on and off inflows. Uh, national munis uh, basically saw the, the worst uh, of the outflows, about $436 million of money flew out of their coffers, but again, we're a little bit more sanguine on the muni bond fund market as far as uh, inflows coming out in the future. Now, if we take a look at money market funds, this is where Lion's share got uh, got crushed. $19.2 billion in outflow. Second consecutive week that we've seen outflows and how this broke out. Taxable money market funds saw about $17.7 .7 billion of money to leave their coffer. And how that broke out is institutional investors actually took out $19.8 billion. We expected this. This is a seasonality issue. We saw a ton of money going in about two weeks ago. Now we're seeing some money flow out. A lot of people tried to try tie this to the jump in Treasury yields. We saw Treasury yields go from uh, low single digits, or sorry, low double digits, um, uh, probably about uh, 0.12, somewhere in that area, to almost two, uh, uh, two, 22 basis points as far as yield at the one month. I don't think that was the cause. Could have been a little bit of it, but we really think it's people paying their quarterly dues, uh, paying their, their taxes, you know, doing stuff with quarterly money. Uh, moving around, so that certainly was a trend. If we take a look, though, on the flip side, so institutional investors again took out about 19.8 billion, where we had retail investors just didn't know where to go, put about 2.1 billion dollars in to those coffers, and then if we take a look, tax exempt money market funds, so about 1.5 billion dollars in outflows uh, for the week. So certainly that was the story. Well, as we look forward uh, to next week, we're actually going to keep our eyes on the earnings season. Like I said, actually Alcoa kicked off the unofficial beginning of the earnings season pretty strong numbers. We're hoping that that continues. Um, if so, maybe they'll start lifting the, mar num uh, the markets. Actually, uh, certainly on late Thursday, we saw a good return. Friday's uh, you know, uh, return was pretty good. So right now, we're hoping that we'll have some good market uh, response uh, to uh, economic financial news rather than political news. But that is what we have to keep our eye on. We have to look for the impasse to be over for both the uh, uh, debt ceiling and also the impasse as far as the government closure goes. And uh, once we get that, we can get back to looking at investments the way they're supposed to be based on fundamentals rather than on political. Well, if you want to take a deeper dive uh, into the areas that you want to uh, do more research in, you can certainly go to our website at lipperusfundflows.com uh, or you can join us next week where one of our analysts will talk to you about the flows. Uh, thanks for joining me today. My name is Tom Rosine and I'm wishing you the best in your wealth planning and creation.